I think I've got a good intro, so are you good for me to intro? Of course. So, hello everyone. Welcome back to the Bat Post Podcast, episode one of season four. It's kind of mad that we've done four seasons, but mm. it wouldn't be a Bat Post Podcast without something being off or weird. Of course, Josh isn't here. <laughs> for the season, you know, we're coming back. We've made a big point of the fact that we're coming back and we're being consistent. And already, Josh isn't here. I just love, I love that. I don't know why. It's... I think it's more weird that, that I'm actually here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like Adam's here and Josh isn't. And that's and that's how we're starting this. So this is your first time here. Welcome to the chaos that is the Back Pose podcast. Oh. Adam, how are you doing? I am good. I'm tired, but I'm good. <laughs> He's a, a long week, he's a little bit delicate, aren't you, mate? I am, mate. I was, um, I'm currently in a new house, different setup. It's looking good. <laughs> yeah, I'm ready to go, mate. I'm ready to do it. Good, man. I'm, I'm feeling good. I was a bit hungover, to be fair, but I went out and had my Sunday roast pie. I've had some cocktails. I've also got a rum. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. I'm ready to talk about some transfers. Um. <sighs> Where should we start, Adam? Should we start with, you know what, we'll start with United. We'll start with your club because I okay. think United are having a good window. I think, you, well, I mean, you haven't, I mean, have, you, have, you, have you only signed one player? But it's yeah. a really well, good player. No, we, we signed two. Don't forget Tom Heaton. Oh, sorry, of course. How could I forget about Tom Heaton? <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you look at it from this season's perspective, you know, going into the new season, yeah, it's looking decent so far. Sancho's look you know, Sancho's done. There's a few of us looking likely. But if you look at it from last season, we wanted him you know, we wanted Sancho for like since last summer. So us getting him is, is great, but it's a bit it's bittersweet because we should have had him last season. Yeah. Um, so, so you it's like it's a bit annoying that you finally got him, but you could have had him last season. And who knows if you had him last season, would you have won the Europa League? Would he, that, would he have been the you know, difference maker? That's it. And you're like, <laughs> I don't. As much as I, I like, I think he's a good signing, and I think he'll, you know, he'll improve the squad. I don't. I'm still not really happy with with the transfer. You know, we're like taking the, the piss a bit. I think with with. With Sancho, Varane's going to go on for ages. I don't think that will go through, to be honest. We, we just take our time with everything. And it seems like what we United, let's say Chelsea wanted Sancho. You'd have, we'd have, you'd have played 20 million less for him. But because it's us, it's just everything's just overcomplicated and overpriced. Yeah, that's so. just that's just United tax. So you, you have to deal mm. with that year in, year out, no matter what. Um, but yeah. to be fair, you, you've got, how much was Sancho? 72? That's yeah, that's, that's not similar. bad for someone who has the potential to be one of your best but ever players. Like I'm saying, I'm not saying yeah, he will, but he has the potential to do that. And going back to it as well, I think if we would have bought him last season, we would have paid double that. Yeah, easily they wanted 150, didn't they? Yeah, so we, it makes sense to get him now a bit cheaper. He's you know he's still very very young. He's good mates with Rashford, Greenwood. There's good, there's, it looks like there's good chemistry in the in the air, the squad at the moment. Which also brings me on to the next point I want to bring up, which is Lingard. Yeah, boy. Um, it, he's always been a United player. You know, he's United through and through. He's got a great relationship with Ole, with the rest of the team. I'm glad he went away last year. And, you know, it, it's no surprise to anyone that he, he did, you know, we, sorry, we were surprised that he, he did well and he, sort of got West Ham where they are they are now so he's came back he scored yesterday I know he got beat off QPR <laughs> uh, he's looking he's looking lively and I'm hoping that he stays because I think he's a good asset to have in the squad especially when Bruno last season played nearly every minute he looked knackered towards the end and we were relying on him too much you know, we, we've got these cup games where he doesn't have to play and he did play because he had no one to back him up. So Lingard will hopefully play as sort of that centre attacking role when Bruno can't. Yeah, that's that's a massive shout to be fair because like Lingard showed his, his, his ability, didn't he? Like 
Everyone wrote mm. him off. Everyone's like, oh, Lingard, you know, he's he's washed up this and that. He all oh, everything, you know, got took the piss out of. And he's gone away to West Ham and showed just how good of a player he actually is. Because like some players, mm. you know, when they come through the ranks and they play at a big club, you know, you might you sometimes don't, you forget how good they actually are to get to where they're at. And Lingard's mm. one of those. Like he is a really good baller, but it's one of those. Like does yeah. uh, does he want us? sit behind Fernandez like you don't you, you can imagine that you wouldn't especially after having the success at West Ham you know hmm. so well, like it's, he's got something to prove now hasn't he like if he does you know kick on and, and carry on playing well like he did at West Ham there's no reason why he shouldn't be starting over Marshall you know what I mean and those types of players yeah we need competition now if we are going to be on City's calibre they've got you know, two maybe three men for each position they play, so that's you know the competition we're dealing with. So keeping Lingard is definitely the right decision. Yeah, that's a, that's a that's a wicked point to be fair because like depth is everything in the Prem right now. Like Pep Guardiola is mm. quite good with his depth; he knows how to use it. Oli had an eleven, and it was his best eleven, and it's a great eleven. But then you bring yeah, in struggled like. With- yeah, you're bringing Dan James off the bench. You know what I mean? Like mm. you're not bringing on that's anyone right. special. So uh, yeah, that's that's a massive shot. I, I obviously, if if I was a United fan, I'd want to keep Lingard, even just for like morale. He seems like a great guy to have around, doesn't it? Uh, um, he seems like a he's, he's a big big influence in the changing room. Anyway, you can see that. Well, and then so you're saying Varane's not? You don't think that's happening? I mean, you know what? I think it will happen. But next year, we're going to pay. <laughs> well, no, I think it has to happen this year. If it doesn't happen this year, there's no point in getting him. We'd rather, I'd rather go for yeah someone younger. I think a bit of a sidetrack, but I think Arsenal have made a fantastic start signing with Ben White. You think? Yeah, like fifty mil. It's quite a lot, but that's he's, yeah, he's got to be there for a few years. But I think he's a class and a half. Me, I think we should be going for someone like him. But if go back to Varane. Proven, World Cup winner, Champions League winner. He's done it all. Let's get him to the club. But I just cannot be asked. I mean, it's not my money, but I don't want to be mugged off again. Yeah. It's. It seems like at United, like I said before, we pay more than anyone else because of we are United. Um, but it, let's let's we did say we do sign him. He'll slot perfectly next to Maguire. I think. And Maguire showed his he, absolute class, didn't he? Like Maguire was yeah. a meme at the start of last season, and he's ended it mm. as one of the Premier League's best centre backs. So him alongside exactly. another world class centre back, you're looking at a United that can challenge. I think. Hundred percent, and I feel tight on Lindelof because, I mean, it's obvious that Rand's a better centre half than Lindelof. But Lindelof, I think, had a good tournament at the Euros. I think he had a good back end to last season. I actually don't think he's a bad player. I just don't think he has confidence on the ball. And what Varane brings is calm, composure when on the ball and off the ball. He reads the game fantastically. Yeah. Mate, the Varane. best thing Chelsea did like, for the, in the last couple of years was bringing in Thiago Silva to make mm-hmm. our other centre-backs better. He came in, he's composed yeah. on the ball. He's obviously a bit older, but he's so he's a world-class defender and he hasn't lost it. He's confident on the ball. He knows positionally where he needs to be. And then people like Rudiger, who I thought needed to go at one point, genuinely, yeah. he's one of the best centre backs at the club at the moment. Because I and I think <laughs> it's because of Silva, really do. So like getting a yeah, well, person like Varane well, would be the same. Not, you know, it's like when Ibra came to United, he was teaching Rashi, he was teaching, um, you know, Greenwood. He, yeah, he's that. It's the same with Cavani. Yeah, absolutely. They, they've got that experience. They, they know where the goal is in terms of Varane knows where the goal is behind him. It's got to be a great sign if it comes off. I just don't want to be mugged off about it because I don't think... Personally, I think we need to get another centre mid. So us going for, for Varane is going to slow things down in that aspect. You know, I think we yeah. could come out with Varane and Sancho and that's about it. Yeah, could, really, that's two big signings really, isn't it? When really we... We need a striker and we need a centre mid. Well, the last thing I wanted to speak about United was Pogba. Like, there's rumours that he's leaving. I don't know how mm. strong those rumours are. Excuse me, but what do you think? What do you think to that? It happens every year. 
<laughs> it does, to be fair. Simple. It's just the way the tabloids to make money. He's ain't going. He's not going anywhere. You know. Same with uh, the Gaia. Yeah, yeah. There's no talk of the Gaia going, even though he's second fiddle to Henderson. It looks like at the moment. So it just shows what the tabloids can do. Uh, if he went. Would I be asked? No, as long as we can replace him with at least three players, not all in centre mid, you know. From what the money we can make off Pogba, we can get at least two world class players. Yeah. But I don't think he'll go. I don't want him to go. I think I love him. Fair enough. Well, let's... Again, at the Euros, he was class. Oh, he was. He just needs Mate, these players round him. Yeah, when he's got N'Golo Kante next to him that could do everything else, he's, he is good, but when he's got Fred if, next if to him. If I could have one player, if I could have one player <laughs> in the world. It would be Kante. Mate, Kante is just this absolute gem. He is the one of the best footballers because you know what? Mm-hmm. In in the past two years he's had his injury problems right. And then when he's been out of the club, we've been shaky and rubbish, and then when he's been in, we've been confident and strong. Mm-hmm. And it's like I feel like some people just haven't made the connection that when Kante's fit and firing, we're winning games. When Kante's not, if he's out or if he's not fully fit, we, we struggle to win games. It's as simple as that. So honestly, I like he's the best thing we've ever bought. Like when he's like one of the best <laughs> gems as well for, for how much we paid as well. Like mm. un, unreal. So yeah, I think you like Pogba is gonna be better next to him. I think most players would be better next to him. Mm-hmm. Um, you just need someone better than Fred or McTominay behind him. <laughs> it's just Fred, and like, I, I like the meme behind McTominay. I do. I think it's funny, like McSauce and all that bullshit. Mm. It's just Fred, man. He's terrible. There's a clip, yeah. right? There's a clip for the Copper America thing. And um, yeah, I see it. <laughs> all the Brazilian players are like doing step overs, passing it, little flicks, gets to Fred, he tries oh, yeah. one and it fucks it. <laughs> oh, it's beautiful. Everyone, everyone's the meme that he's like not actually a Brazilian. It's so funny. Um, right, yeah, well, he's definitely I, Scottish. <laughs> he's definitely Scottish. Him and, him and McDominay grew up in the same school. Um, McFred? McFred. Not <laughs> fucking hell. Um, yeah. I think that's it for United now. I kind of we want to talk mm-hmm. a little bit later on about like where we think these signings could go, and there's plenty of the window yeah. left, of course. But we'll we'll get onto that. I think we'll move on to Chelsea, right? The um, the Champion League winners, which I'm going to say all fucking year. Oh, young up <laughs> bastards! <laughs> uh. Yeah. Champions League winners, man. I'm going to keep saying it this whole season now. It, it, I'm going to live it up and I'm, and it's going to wind Josh up a lot, so I can't wait for that. Subscribe <laughs> to see that. Um, but we haven't signed anyone. We've uh, A lot of uh, youth has gone out the door, of course, with Chelsea, mm. but we've actually not signed anyone. And um, Chelsea, you know, we're quite, I think, you know, we're quite good with business. Oh, it's hit and miss, really. But I think Maureen is quite a smart businesswoman. She she kind of like knows how to get people, how to sell people, get a load of money for it, all this and that. But we've actually not done any business yet, but there's been so much talk. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> I'm going to have to edit that out. <laughs> yeah, there's just been there's been so much talk about a striker, right? Uh, and I've already mm. made a video on this actually, so I'm going to put in a clip to that now to explain how I feel about that, so I don't have to repeat myself. There's three main targets: Chelsea are going big, they're going for the big ones, they're going for Harlan, Lewandowski, and Lukaku. Those three are the names that have been just cycled through the rumor mill. Personally, I don't think Harlan's happening. I think Chelsea Twitter, Chelsea fans are going mad for Harlan, aren't they? They want him so badly, and I understand he's a young talent. Got loads of potential, just really just top of the top, cream of the crop. And, and a lot of people think, you know, he's going to be that next, maybe Ronaldo or something. I don't know. I get it. But I don't think Dortmund are budging. I really don't. I think, you know, they've sold Sancho already. Um, Dortmund are very strict and they know what they want. And I think they want him for the, the season. They've sold Sancho. They don't want to get rid of their other asset, their other big asset, just because they want to compete in their own league. Lewandowski is an interesting one. I think he's incredible. Should have had the Ballon d'Or. Got it rough from him. Uh, he's obviously incredible. Um, but 32, 33 in August. And that's not to say he's not good. And it's this is a weird one. But for me, if you're talking Lewandowski or Lukaku, I go Lukaku every time. He's in his prime right now. He's 28. He's coming into it. He's had years of goal scoring, you know, prowess. He's so good. Um, 
and he's my pick. And that's not to undermine Lukaku, uh, Lewandowski. Of course not. I'd be an idiot to think Lewandowski's shit. He's not. But I think if you're thinking of Chelsea for the next five years, if you're thinking Tuchel, keep him in, see what we can do, see what we can bring. Listen, that's not the Chelsea way. <laughs> but um, but if you're thinking about that, you bring Lukaku in for me. And there's a, there's a plenty of reasons. I think, you know, he he's in his prime. He's just doing so well. He wasn't given the opportunity at Chelsea, but we know he loves Chelsea. He idolises Didier Drogba. He played there. I think he's a fan. He loves Chelsea, just wasn't given his opportunity. Maybe come back and prove, prove why people were wrong. Also, prove why people were wrong when he went to United. He got a lot of stick there, even though he was phenomenal at Everton, phenomenal at West Brom. Just didn't quite do it at United, even though he scored loads of goals. Uh, so I think that could work. And also, like, the thing is with Lukaku, he's, he's thrived under Conte, right? And Conte plays a similar system to you know, Tuchel, you know, the three at the back, the wing backs, and then he plays with a two up top. So he kind of plays like a, a three five two. And that's not too dissimilar to how Tuchel plays. He likes playing with the three at the back, he likes playing with wing backs, he likes having two or three up top. It works similarly. So that that could work. He could fit into the system perfectly. Uh also he's played so well with Martinez. Imagine that with a Werner or a Havertz, you know, next to him. You know, but we all know Werner likes to play off players. So does Havertz, to be fair to him. Imagine they've got Lukaku to play off. So, you know, using him as a passing wall, you know, or whipping crosses into him like this. I think this could really work. I, I'm i leaning towards the Lukaku camp, me, and that's my opinion. I want to know what yours is. So let me know in the comments. Most people probably want Haaland. That's amazing. 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 Amazing video. You should watch it. Watch the full version. <laughs> Yeah, watch the full version. Um, or if you're listening, go on the YouTube channel. Roman's on a mad one. Listen, he keeps just putting money down. I, I think the bill's at 175 now. Jesus. Like, yeah. it's mental. He needs to stop. Because personally, I think we need a centre-back. We need another centre-back. I spoke about Thiago Silva. He's 38 in August, right? Yeah. Well, this... He got knocked. He was in the Champions League final, he got knocked. Yeah, and you sort of cheat yourself. Yeah, I'll, yeah, mate. Yeah, yeah exactly. He, he, <laughs> my reaction was, oh fuck, when he went down in the Champions League, literally out loud. And listen, he's been incredible. And the likes of Rudiger, Christensen, Zuma, mm. they would have learned from him. But he can't play all season. I know that. I remember this time last year, you, you and Josh were taking the piss out of me. You were like, oh, you've got this old man at your club, blah blah blah, and he's been brilliant. Um, yeah. And I think you should start taking the piss out of more United players, so we can suck it. You know, we can win something. <laughs> oh dear. Um, but yeah, no. So he's got. If, if you went, sorry, if you went for Haaland, you're not signing anyone else. Yeah, for like, at least two windows. Just for just you know, for minimum, I'd just say. for fair play reasons, like financial, mm. like. I just, it's crazy I don't think that's happened I think Dortmund are digging their heels in a little bit as well I think you know they've sold Sancho to you like no, but they've sold Sancho to you like they're not going to want a season without Sancho and Haaland they're goal scorers mm. like they'll be in the mud you know what I mean they need to they haven't reinvested the Sancho money quick enough so I don't think they will yeah I don't I, you know what I don't think they'll get Lukaku either I think that um I think it came out today that Inter have no interest in, in letting him go. No, I know. I, I don't think I don't think Lukaku wants to leave either. So I think you might have to look somewhere else, mate. But I, but I I don't know where else. But personally, I, I don't know how controversial this is. I think Chelsea fans are a bit mental. But um, I'm happy to keep Timo and Havertz and and Tammy and and Tammy Abraham. And again, in that video, I made it clear mm. on my foot thoughts on Tammy, but. If you keep those three, Timo and Havertz, right, have a brilliant opportunity now. Like they, they didn't have the best season, but they've won a Champions League. Havertz was pivotal in that moment. He scored the only goal. They can they can really kick on from here now. You know, usually you give a player a year at um you know, in your the league and then the next season, that's when you judge them. Now's time. I think Havertz is gonna be incredible. He's such shown glimpses of being a real talent. Like Berbatov esque, mm. like the way he's so like nonchalant about it. I can't wait to see Havertz. Werner, it's like I just hope he comes good for him. Um, yeah, Werner is a good player. Though. It's just we talk about all the time. His his, his technical ability is fantastic. His speed and the way he gets into positions is class. He just can't finish. Yeah, he, he can't. Like, bought, no, he can when he's offside, mate. Ball. When he's offside, he's oh, yeah, a fucking true. baller. He <laughs> sticks it top bin. I think it'll come. I like him. I think. But saying that, I think the best setup for Chelsea at the moment is Havertz and Werner uh, 
you know, either side of the wings. But I, I, I prefer like a front three of Havertz, Werner, and Mount, and it just being quite fluid and like them moving around. Mm. That was the. But then you've not got that physical presence up there, which is essentially what these. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that's that's what we're missing. But I think we can play without it basically, and also when we do need that, you get Tammy. Tammy subs on yeah, straight but, away. You know what? You've, I, I think you should have. I think you should have kept Giroud over Tammy. I listen. I Tammy. It's a weird one. No, but Ta- Tammy scored more goals than anyone at Chelsea in the past couple of years. Like I swear, he scored twelve. At, like was it last year or the year before? Like he can score goals when given the opportunity. He need. He's the kind mm. of guy that gets one in every three, maybe. Or then if yeah. he's having a good bit of spell, two in every three, maybe. But that's okay. That's clinical enough for me, as long as you're winning. And the way Tuchel plays, we get those opportunities. We get the one nils, the two nils. That's fine. Yeah. So, like for me, I I don't think it's that necessary. I think it, it will be soon. But like Pep doesn't have like the out and out striker. I know they're looking at Kane. Yeah, that's true. We'll get onto that. But I don't know. I, I think the striker one's weird. I think we need to. Look at other positions first. I think it's not that we don't need a striker. I think we can do without one, but other positions need filling. Like mm. centre back, right? We got rid of Gerhi and Tamori this summer, right? And I think they're two of the most promising English centre backs in the country. Mm. Why are we getting rid of them? Like Tamori, the the, well, the second he went to AC Milan, I knew he was gone. It was upsetting, but I knew it. He's there fully now. Yeah, fully there now. They they used their option to buy. It was like thirty mil, which is a steal because he's brilliant. Honestly, he he'll mm. be in the England setup next year, if not the year the um if or he should be next year. I don't know why I wouldn't say anything else. And Gay is really class as well, and these are good squad players. Mm. So we seem to be getting rid of them. So I'm thinking, hopefully, we get a centre back because Silva's getting on. Um, we've got Zuma, Rudiger, and Christensen. Uh, Christensen's really good. He had a good Euros as well. Rudiger mm. seems to be decent. Zuma's always a bit shaky, but I just think there needs to be another one. There needs to be like I don't know. It's different. We have we play three at the back as well, so really yeah, three yeah, of them are way. always playing. Uh, so I don't know. I think there's a position that we need, and as well, um, I don't know. It's it's difficult because I think I like I'm trying to think of who needs to go. And like, well, I've heard that, uh, and then Hudson and Dye are supposed to be going to back to Bayern because I know they've wanted him for a couple. Of they've years wanted now. him for a while, yeah. but I've heard, uh, mate, I've heard loads of things. I've heard that he's having a great preseason and Tuchel has him in his plans. And then elsewhere, I'm hearing that Tuchel hates him and wants him, <laughs> wants him gone. Like, you just don't know what to believe, do you? But I hope Hudson and Dye stays. Actually, I hope you know what. <laughs> I don't want to sign many players. I just hope that we keep Hudson Odoi. I hope that we keep Ruben Loftus Cheek because this could be a good year for him. He's, he's get this needs to be his time now. You have been saying that for a while. No, the, the, this is his time now. It's then he went to Palace. It's do or die right now. I think at Chelsea for him because he can come in, be a rotating player, be a good squad player. He was brilliant under Sarri. It was that injury in America that really just mm. did done him over. Um, and he's about, I think he's 25 now, so he really does need to kick on. Um, but I'd like to see that, opposed to buying another one, like another midfielder. I'd rather just see Ruben given an opportunity. Mm. Um, and it was the same with the centre backs, but we sold him. So that's that's um, that's Chelsea. I think we'll take a quick break, and then we'll come back for mm. part two and talk about some of the transfer stuff. Talk about Harry Kane as well. Right, I was. If you couldn't tell, I was absolutely desperate for a cup of water because my throat was drying up. I've not done a podcast in a while, so we're back part two, um, and we want to talk about Spurs. And it would help if we had our Spurs boy here, but he's busy. He's been very busy. Uh, to be fair, to him, we're giving a bit of stick on the on the pod, right? But you know, he's he has been busy. Yeah, he has been but working hard. To be fair to him, he has. He's been grafting. So. But he made a video the other day, so I'm going to cut to a clip of that because they've actually been making some movements. Football begins again, and football kicks off with two signings, um, probably probably confirmed. Um, Gallini from Atalanta, apparently a goalkeeper that is is coming in to, you know, do what Joe Hart couldn't, um, do what Gazard Niga wasn't given the chance to, although he probably wasn't going to be a top keeper, um, but compete with Lloris for a first-team keeper spot. And I love, love Lloris. But, you know, he's been with us a long time and 
how many challenges has he really faced in terms of his starting position since, you know, Friedel left. Um, Vorm, Gazagniga, Hart, Whiteman. So that's fantastic. Um, the second signing looks like we're going to say goodbye to the last of the Magnificent Seven, Eric Lamella. And also give 25 million to Sevilla, as well as him, to sign Brian Gill. Now, I'd be lying if I said I knew much about this guy. Um, Ross remembers him as an Abar wonder kid. Ross has a strange love for Abar. Um, four goals, three assists. But we've seen this before, haven't we, from Nuno? Look at Fabio Silva for Wolves. You know, 50 million on a kid that scored, I think it was one senior goal when he went to Wolves. So... As previous for this, Nuno seems to be a guy, Patrici as well, I'm sure, uh, we're looking for that next big thing. And it's a gamble. The kids got, I think it was either four assists and th four goals and three assists or vice versa. Um, but he's considered one of the top young talents in Spain. And, you know, again, we, we've, we've seen this at Wolves, Pedro Neto. Um, oh, Bollocks, he can't start something in the nomination. But, you know, like he's sort of in that mould, isn't he? The Nettos, the Yotters, the Podences. I know they're not the same, but you can see why the system that Nuno is going to play, that's a signing that makes a lot of sense. And then, that's great, Josh. Thank you. Well done. Uh, go watch that video if you haven't already. Uh, and I'm going to get him to talk about Harry Kane as well, because obviously the big story, the thumbnail of this podcast will be about Harry Kane. Josh is going to have a quick word about that and then we'll get into it. Hello, guys, Jay and Adam and you at home. I uh, haven't spoken in a while and we're not going to speak much here because I am absolutely shattered and Jay's asked me to talk about Harry Kane. Um, do I think he'll leave? I honestly don't know. It's 50-50 now. Um, but if he does leave, we'll get more than 160 million for him so as long as we invest that wisely you know look at Liverpool with Coutinho that's a lot of money and Kane is irreplaceable but Tottenham one day has to continue without him um I wish him I'll always wish him all the best I've never seen a better player play football um really especially for Tottenham um but I hope he doesn't win anything, obviously. Um, it looks like it will be City. I don't think he'll go abroad. Uh, Daniel Levy will bite. Will is not stupid enough to sell him to Chelsea. And, yeah, honestly, it's fine. And I'm going to bed because I'm up at five. I'm, I've got to be there at five. I'm up at half four tomorrow. So, you know what? Um, I'll be more podcasty later. But for now, who gives a shit? See you later. Bye. So, Harry Kane... There's a lot of back and forth going on here, but the Sun actually reported that the fee is 160 mil. Uh -huh. His wages will be 400k, and this is coming from a source that directly knows his brother, who's his agent. Right. right. Now, I don't really like listening to the Sun, but <laughs> but there seems to be a lot of things in place for Harry Kane to be moving to a city, right? I think Levy really doesn't want him going to a, a London club, obviously, it would ch be in Chelsea. I think Real Madrid and Barcelona just don't have the funds or the, the anything. Mm -hmm. And then PSG, they've got Mbappe and Neymar. They don't need Kane. I think City's the only place he's going to go and Kane's up, made it very clear he wants to go. I can't not see him in a City shirt come the start of the season. I don't know about you. I know, I mean... I would absolutely, you know, chop your hands off for him, but I don't think we can afford Sancho and Verana as well as Kane. So it, it oh, looks... It looks <laughs> no, 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 sorry. You could, oh, yeah, we, we could. just won't. <laughs> yeah, we just definitely won't. So, but no, I think it does look pretty inevitable that he's going to go sit there because... Well, if he doesn't go sit, he's, he's not leaving. He's staying at Tottenham. In my eyes, anyway. So, yeah, he'll just die at Tottenham, try <laughs> I know, if if he does go to City, I think uh, we're all in a bit of trouble. Yeah. Because he, That's... He's, he's in his prime right now. City are missing the the one player off being elite, I think, which is a, a striker, a through-and-through striker. And Kane is arguably one of the best in the world at the moment. So... <sighs> listen, listen, if they get him... 
they're on for a quadruple. They were on for a quadruple without him. Chelsea stopped that. Mm. So you were. I mean, you, you know, you can't guess what's going to happen this season, but yeah. It doesn't look you, too good. You for could us. put good money on them winning stuff, mm. right? And, and and as well, there's that whole thing with make a Champions League final, the next one you make you win. Chelsea did it 08, 12. Yeah. Liverpool did it. Um they didn't get to their first one. I don't know. But as well, it's you know, kind you, of a thing. You've got I mean I don't know if this could happen still or not. They're still heavily linked with Grealish. So You know what? I completely forgot about yeah that they are, aren't they? They're trying to break the bank and spend like a hundred mil on it. Can they buy both of them players? What do you say? I mean, they can like literally, but I don't know if they're mm. allowed to. Do you know what I mean? I think what you've got <laughs> on their side they're both English, aren't they? So <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's doing good. But I, 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 do, do they even need Grealish? Like probably and not. I think I think they don't they need buy to make him room so that we don't buy him. Oh. Yeah. I, they need to make room. They'd need to get rid of like Bernardo Silva or mm-hmm. something like that um, if they were to get him. Um, but he's another one. Like Villa and Tottenham are very similar. They're they're your club. Mm-hmm. You love them with all your heart, but you are now at a stage where you either go and it's a hard decision to make. To be fair, I'm not going to say it's an easy one. You got to think of legends that have stayed at their clubs. You've either got to go, do I stay here and become a one club man legend, maybe potentially win something with my club and it'd be the best day in their history or whatever, or do I go on and become the elite athlete I can, I can be and get trophies in mm-hmm. my cabinet? Now, one seems a bit more human and a bit more nice, <laughs> a nicer story, but then the other one is more prestigious and it's about how you're remembered, isn't it? I think that's what these footballers have I to think, think of. I think that's down to who you are as a person, isn't it? That's- quite philosophical yeah, yeah. but you know does Kane want to be number one or does he want to be I, mean, I suppose you can both be number one at both your club and you know in terms of trophies it's, it's, it's what he wants to go for in that aspect well people get lucky don't they like Puyol for Barca one club man but it's at Barcelona mm. so you get to win trophies whereas if you're a one club man with Tottenham you're going to be lucky to win a trophy <laughs> or two in your time and that's not me being horrible that's just being true like that you know, they they had their best spell under Poch and they still didn't win mm. anything like not their best spell ever, but like and one of their most, you know, promising times and they couldn't win anything then. So And this is I don't, the thing I, that we we we've, we've knew now as well, I don't think Sorry, there's an ambulance going past. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to disrespect Nuno in any way. I think he's a top manager, I think what he done with Wolves was fantastic. But does Kane want to work under him? If I was Kane, probably not. I think I'd rather work on the Pep. Yeah, because you've got Pep Guardiola yeah. saying, come here, mate, and we'll win everything. Yeah, like, your head will be turned. It's about 400 grand a week mm. as well. Like, let's 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 remember that these people are humans and money yeah. persuades everything. And I, I, think um, Le- I think Levy would be... He's a fantastic businessman, Daniel Levy. He would be idiotic not to take that money. That's so much money. 160 mil. You, you can... They, make you could make another big sign in. They could make a, can, they could sign a fifty mil striker and in bag. You never know. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And like, you know what as well? Players like Son have the ability now to step mm. up. At least you sign, sign a new them, contract. Yeah. yeah, so I it's a weird one at Tottenham. Unfortunately we don't have our Tottenham man here to talk about this. But listen, I think Harry Kane needs to go. Um, personally, as as you know, as an England fan, I love Harry Kane. As a Chelsea fan, I hate the bastard. Um, but for me, I just want to see him become one of the greats because he's an English lad. You know what I mean? You want to see mm. him be one of the best English players ever. You know what I mean? Like you want to see that as an England fan. So the, there is that, and we we've touched on it there. If we if if Kane, like I think next season's gonna be interesting. We've talked about a bunch of the bigger clubs. There's other there's other deals in in there like. Liverpool have got Canate. Mm-hmm. That's brilliant signing. They've got Van Dijk coming in back. So yeah. like, you know, it's kind of things big. are putting in place. This could be a good season. This uh, could be either City get Kane and Grealish and they win everything, or this could be United push because they've got Sancho. They might have a run. Chelsea, a Champions League for champ. Uh, we got two show. We might be getting someone big in. You know, United uh, like. This could Liverpool. This could be a great season. I think this could be a really good one. We say that at the start of every season. Mm. I think, but and then like someone runs away with I it. Think, but no, I this think this has it potential. Will be very close. I think it'll be a top three 
close race. I think it will, honestly, I think it'll be City United Chelsea up there. I don't yeah, think I don't think it will be. I think that is the the big three, of course, that could be upset. And you know, we can't overlook, you know, good business that Leicester always do. Mm. And and you know, Villa getting Buendia, like that's a brilliant yeah. move. If they keep Grealish, have him, Watkins firing. You know what I mean? Like these teams that are starting to you know, the Premier League is becoming like a bit more open, like it was really open. Uh, and then United dominated, and mm. that pissed me off as a kid. And then it kind of got open again because you like fell off. Fergie left, and then City were like, "Okay, no, we're going to dominate now." And then now it's starting to get open again. Um, just hopefully, City don't continue that dominance. Um, well, I'm excited, man. I, re- I really am. This could be could be good. Could be good season. I've had heartbreak of England. <laughs> I've had a couple of weeks off it now. Uh, and now we're doing the podcast again. I'm talking about transfers. I'm getting excited for the season. I don't know about you. I think it's is it two weeks now. Uh, yeah, I think it is. Wait, I think two, we're two weeks. Oh no, it's a Friday night game. I don't know who that is, but we play Leeds half twelve on a Saturday, which is the fourteenth. Yeah, we've got Palace. Leeds is a good game. Mm. Leeds is is a good game. Um, yeah, so that's the Premier League. We spoke about the Premier League. Um, transfers and stuff obviously there's so much on the window left that everything could change yeah. <laughs> this, this we'll have to do a round up and eventually won't we so yeah of course we'll, we'll do loads more um, we just thought this was a relevant podcast to make um, briefly if you want to look around we want to look around Europe just briefly at other transfers and I think the one that stands out because we can talk about the Champions League mm-hmm. in this but the one that stands out is PSG man they are buying everyone they want Donna Rummer, the best player at the Euro, Euros mm-hmm. Still only 22 somehow, even though he's been around for ages. <laughs> Probably arguably the best goalkeeper in the world, unless Jordan Pickford is, is that. Um, so he's gone there. Poor Navas as well, bless him. Then you've got Hakimi, who just likes to pass around clubs, but he's one of the best um, fullbacks at the moment. Mm-hmm. Um, we now has gone there, who will have more of a license to roll, roam about in that midfield, opposed to, you know maybe having to sit more deeper with Liverpool. Mm. They're going off. They might get Pogba, like, if that rumour is true. Yeah, I mean... But, uh, they've signed an Mbappe um, contract. Yeah. They've got Neymar. They've still got Di Maria. I think they, they're doing bits, man. They re- uh, they've they got Ramos. How did I forget about Ramos? Oh, shit, yeah. I so, <laughs> yeah, so, like, which is a bit of a weird one because the hole that Thiago Silva left, they're just replaced with another old yeah. centre-back. But, but it just goes to show how much they needed him. I mean, the, the, the thing is, though, with the PSG, I know they lost the league last, last year. They should be winning that hands down this year. Not, not, you know, but with, in terms of Champions League, I still just see them cocking up again. Last 16, something like that. It, but they, to be fair, they made the final, then they made the semi, so mm. they are kind of breaking that round of six. Listen, I don't want PSG to, de- PSG to win anything, but like... They are looking. Like their team's looking nice as well. I do, I'm liking the look of them. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm more concerned about. So obviously, when Alan went to PSG for free, because we thought for a minute that he was going to go Barca, and I thought that was pretty much done. But, but mm, it, yeah. it turns out Barca aren't, aren't too well at the moment. Like, I think they're. Uh, I think they're actually on their deathbed. It seems. <laughs> and, hey, listen. I well, growing up like I proper romanticised Barcelona. Mm. They're the club in my eyes. They're the best club. They do it in a, a good way where they get all these academy players and they do it the right way. They just have talent and and Messi's the best player in the world. And then all of a sudden they they did weird transfer after weird transfer. Started spunking money everywhere. And now they're in like billions of pound of debt and like they have it they're suing their players for not taking pay cuts and <laughs> like what's going on it's mental it's, like, it's even mess you know taking a 50 percent pay cut apparently yeah i mean he was that on, just sh- that shows how much he loves barca though i know but like, he was on like nearly a million a week so i i think i think half i think i'd manage half a mil a week to be honest with you uh, but no, he, he, he could have. You know what? No, he couldn't have gone anywhere else. No one else was going to pay those wages, were there? So I think he, that was the only feasible option. But in terms of the business, they got the pie for free. That's class. Yeah. But and... 
it's the wages that is that, that's been bringing it up because they've got Griezmann who they're, who they're paying a shit ton. So it looks like he's going to be fucking off, but I don't know where. I've heard he's going back to Atletico. Yeah, well, I think again, I think that's broken down. I've heard that it could, again, it's a bit stupid, a swap for Dybala at Juventus. <laughs> But again, that doesn't make uh, sense, does it? Because the bank rot. Yeah, honestly, they're in such shite. It's crazy, man. The way the way like, this transfer what? was was the uh, I can't say his name. He went to uh, Juventus for Arthur Pjanic. Oh, Pjanic! Yeah, that yeah, was yeah. The, one of the they, stupidest transfers they, I've ever seen in my life. That was dodgy. That there, there was something about taxes and mm, pay 100%. cuts. So. Because that that was yeah Juventus have well, got the their thing, history. We've got La Liga is essentially run by the banks, isn't it? So yeah, it's it's a bit a bit dodgy. That I mean they've not been up there for a while. Not going to be wrong, but they could be uh, in a bit of trouble towards the end of the season. I think it's it's cra- it's crazy to see. So yeah, and that, that's why you know doing a full U to uh, do circle here, but that's why. Premier League clubs are doing so well mm. because Real Madrid, Barcelona, P- PSG are anomaly. Like these big clubs can't do it. Juve they can't pay the money at the moment. Mm. Like last year, we spent so much money only because we could. Yeah. Well, I think we went in there and got Havertz before anyone else could. I think we went in there and signed Werner mm. because no one else could. I think we're we just got in the there. Premier League's aspects that. We are, I think. Well, I think it's we are the most watched league in the world in terms of uh, TV rights. You know, where's it shown? How much is it, is it being sold for? I think we are up there with with the top. So that does help everyone out. You know, when we're showing. Yeah, and, and well, and also the the owners that you know, City's owners are just mm-hmm. unlimitedly wealthy. Roman Abramovich is the same. Who who. Really doesn't care about how much money he puts yeah, in. The glazes are the same. Um, we, do, we just don't see it. Yeah, they, that that's just <laughs> weird. So, <laughs> so, so yeah. No, I think we are, the Premier League's just benefiting from that, aren't they? Mm. At the moment, they're benefiting off the fact that these other giants that usually pull in all the all the big players that can't. Um, yeah, I think I think that's it. I, I think is there any other weird transfers out there that we kind of forgetting? Probably are. Probably forgetting. So are we doing any transfers? You know as we're are we? Are we? Yeah. What back post? Mm. Ah, we have gone a, a a whole season without transfer, like Hello. Spurs did that one year. <laughs> I don't know. We might need to do a swap deal though. Um, see who we can get. Should we swap you? No, I would say you'd get the better deal. I was about to say, should we swap you with True Geordie? But you'd get the better deal. Yeah, fine. I'll be the true man. <laughs> the true man. <laughs> I'll be the true bum, brummy. That comes out. That comes out much better than and the true mank, the pr- true brummy. True right. I think we'll we'll end it there. Um, we're back, man. Season four. It's that felt time. good. I en- I enjoyed that ad. I really yeah. did. And it's nice to see we're facing it. We, what what we've done now at the back post is we've actually sat down together and we've gone right. Here's the structure and here's when we're doing the videos. So we're all good. You're going to see our faces a lot more. I cannot wait for it. Yeah, man, we're just gonna get ourselves out there. We, we podcast is coming out every single Monday, without a doubt. If Jeez. if two of them, if two of them are busy, we'll get a guest in. Mm-hmm. If one of us is busy, it'll be two of us. No matter what, we're gonna try and really push it this season. Every Monday, there's gonna be a podcast um, because. You know that's just that's just the right thing to do. We're gonna, of course, do other content throughout the week as well. We're gonna clip the podcast up. We're gonna do all this good stuff. It's really exciting. Uh, I'm really excited about it. We kind of fell off a cliff a little bit. Um, life got in the way. Life's back on track now. So let's do it. We, we're we're bringing it back, man. We're bringing this. I'm in a flat. I'm in a new flat. <laughs> He's in a. I'm in a new flat. He's in a new flat. We got actual jobs. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> um, right. Thanks for watching, everyone. We really appreciate everyone that's here. Um, like I said, please press subscribe. Uh, if you're listening on Spotify, press follow. I think that's what it's called. Mm-hmm. I don't know. We don't. We don't. We should pay more attention to Spotify. Thank you if you are listening on Spotify. <laughs> There's a couple of you out there. Um, and of course, tell your dad. Tell your dad. Tell your dad.